What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we're going over the Steel GTA 26. So this pruner is pretty awesome. Uh, I figured that I better do a review on this, be one of the first ones out there to give you a down and dirty review about it. Things that I want to show you are, uh, we might go into a little bit of the unboxing exactly what you get, but I'm more concerned about what is the capability of this pruner, uh, how far can you push it, uh, what do you want to stick to when it comes to, you know, what you should reasonably expect from this tool. And then I also want to go through runtime. Runtime is important, um, you know, and of course, wrapping it up with value. Is it worth your money? So if you're interested in my review of this GTA 26, stay tuned. All right, guys, so this GTA 26, uh, brand new tool out there from Steel. Uh, if you uh, visit a local dealership, they might have them start coming in. Um, I got one of, I got the very first one from my Steel dealer. Uh, a buddy of mine hooked me up, so uh, I definitely am excited to have this tool in the arsenal. And it's another chainsaw that I didn't have. So uh, if you want to call this little guy a chainsaw, but this thing has a four inch blade on it. Uh, it's pretty gnarly. Uh, this runs a different version of the Pico Mini. This is not the Pico Mini, but it is a quarter inch, and it runs the same chain as the uh, the 250, I think. Or yeah, maybe it is. A, no, it's not a 325. I don't know exactly what it is, but the 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 pole saws and stuff run the same chain. So you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, very cool. What I want to do is go ahead and we'll go through exactly what you get in the kit and then we will suit up and put our PPE on because this thing is highly dangerous and we'll go outside and I'll show you just exactly uh, what you can expect out of this thing and if it's worth your money. So let's uh, see what's inside this case here. All right guys, so when you grab this thing, uh, this has a little case. Now I think it's a little goofy. Uh, the kind of case that it comes in, you know, you put the scabbard on and then it has a little uh, elastic thing here to hold the tool. I think it's a little goofy. Uh, it might go actually the other way. The, the handle might go here. Now, nah, I don't know. So I forget even how I had it in there. So <laughs> whatever the case may be, I think the case is a little goofy. But nonetheless, you need your charger. You need your uh, oil for the chain. And then you need your battery. So the battery comes in this little pack. This is a 10.8 volt battery from Steel. Um, it, uh, it's pretty cool. It reminds me of the Milwaukee M12 battery. Uh, I don't know if they're interchangeable, but they look pretty darn close. That might be something we look at in the future, just saying. So let's get this battery on the charge and make sure it's charged completely up for our testing as we go outside. Um, one of the things that I didn't go over already is that this kind of folds up into a little box here and it has a cute little handle so that you can carry it places. Now, am I going to always use this? Probably not. I'll probably, you know, get rid of it, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll probably always have this on the bench so that I can charge my battery and, you know, keep everything uh, up and ready to go. And that's just how it's gonna go. So let's go ahead and get this battery charged up. Next time I see you, we will be outside and geared up, ready to cut with this bad boy. All right, guys, so our battery is charged. It's green, it's time to cut. So before any of you keyboard warriors out there say I'm not wearing any of my PPE, let's get suited and booted for this. All right, guys, before we take this bad boy outside and let it cut some wood, what we're going to do is take our still multi oil bio, a uh, little chain oil, and what we're going to do is lightly oil the chain. So you want to keep it oiled to the point where, uh, you know, it's not dripping off the chain, but you are keeping some uh, lubricant there on the chain. So this does not have an oiler, uh, this is purely just oil that you put on from the can. You shouldn't have to oil it that, that often. Uh, it will, uh, in essence, stay on there for a little while. Uh, you're not gonna burn this thing up. It doesn't go that fast. So it's not spinning at thousands of revolutions an hour or a minute. 
Um, so, you know, you should be just fine. So we've inserted the battery. We now have to make sure that we have both hands on the tool uh, as per the manufacturer's instructions. There is a little uh, toggle switch here on the left or right of the tool. So you can use your index finger here or you can use your thumb over here. So uh, also has a battery gauge here that will tell you how full the battery is. Piece of cake. So we're ready to go cut. Our little shield here springs up out of the way. Always keep your finger straight off the trigger until you're ready to fire. <clears throat> Later, we'll go over tensioning the chain and we'll go over all that after we cut. I, I'm not worried about that right now. So let's head outside. All right, guys, so forgive me if it's a little windy out here. Uh, it's just a windy day today in Ohio, but nonetheless, you're gonna get to see the review today. So what I wanna start off with is we're gonna make as many cuts as possible in uh, wood that is the same size as a bar. So we're gonna be cutting four inch stuff. This is absolutely a torture test to see how long the battery will last. Uh, we're gonna speed through it, but uh, in, in the end, I'll roll in exactly how long the, the battery lasted. So that you know, if you're cutting the maximum amount possible with this saw, how long of runtime you will get. After this test, we'll go and we'll cut some brush, honeysuckle, some small stuff, and we'll just see how long it generally lasts so that you get a uh, extreme case scenario and a everyday use scenario um, cutting stuff like this. Okay, so let's get down to it. Just wanna show you that this is the same size as the tool, and let's start cutting. All right guys, so that was real time exactly how long it took to wear out that battery. Uh, this is worst case scenario if you're cutting through, you know, this stuff is the thickness of the bar. I mean, you're talking about four inch pieces. If you're cutting th this stuff with this little guy, I mean, you need to have serious, you know, reasonable expectations about this thing because you should be cutting this kind of log with a 170 or a top handled saw or, you know, a, a chainsaw other than this. You're not going to be doing that. This is a pruner. So I just want to put that out there that this was an extreme test. This was absolutely 100% capability of this tool. Do not have these kind of expectations about it. That's why the battery only lasted, uh, I think, something like two minutes, okay? So, absolutely 100% you know uh, use the right tool for the right job so now we're gonna recharge this battery I'm gonna meet you back out here and we're gonna go through and do some actual pruning of what this tool is designed for small limbs uh, you know pruning little branches and little stuff it's not designed to be doing this kind of thing so absolute worst case scenario now we're gonna do a more reasonable test and we're gonna see exactly how long it lasts all right, guys, so we're headed back out here. Uh, I just got done charging the battery. Uh, it took about 25 minutes to charge it from uh, dead empty like you saw it to uh, full again or green. So the main reason why I bought this pruner was because I wanted to have the ability to cut uh, vines off of trees. So I hope it's not too windy and you can hear me all right. The audio is not messed up. So. Uh, I really wanted it to cut little uh, vines and stuff on trees. So uh, like these these trees here, um, I wanted the ability to, you know, go in here and just cut these little vines out. Boom, just like that. So I, uh, 
that's the main reason why I went ahead and got this pruner. Um, we're going to do a test here. I'm going to go down over the woods uh, and well, over the woods. I have no idea why I just said that, but we're going to go down into the woods and I'm going to uh, cut back some bush honeysuckle and we're going to see just how long this thing will run. I'm going to put it to the test, uh, you know, just casually clearing brush, cutting it, clearing brush, cutting it. And, um, We'll see how long it lasts. So, of course, just like before, I'm going to speed it up. Um, so I will have a time for you at the end exactly how much work I got out of this battery. But, you know, two minutes and ten seconds for that test to cut those four-inch logs. I mean, it's pretty impressive for such a small tool and such a small battery. So let's go ahead and set the camera down. I'm going to go into the woods. Let's cut some uh, brush. And uh, I'm going to clear a path through here. And uh, you're going to watch. guys so I'm sweating my butt off there um, one of the things I hate doing is clearing brush on the side of the hill bush honeysuckle grows like crazy and then it's on the side of the hill super dangerous to get in there with a top handled saw and cut that stuff this thing made it absolutely safe so even a couple times I fell with this thing while I was running it and I didn't even come close to the blade where a top handled saw, if I had it in the woods with me, I it would have been um, closer than I care to come to the chainsaw. So I've fallen in the woods a bunch of times with the chainsaw trying to saw on the, uh, on the slope. Yes, it's probably not recommended. Wear all of your PPE. This thing made it a lot safer. And it surprisingly lasted a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So based on our first test, um, I didn't have a lot of great expectations for it in the woods, but it surprised me. So I think that it just ran for, heck, I'll rule it in here, but it had to have been every bit of, you know, 15 minutes, I would say, on how long it ran. So for general pruning, and I mean, that was me pretty much keeping the thing running the whole time, just from branch to branch to branch to branch. So if you were out there just pruning this and that, I don't see why this thing wouldn't last an hour with you. So uh, it, it definitely, when you're cutting something that's uh, a size that this is supposed to handle and is designed for, by all means, you could get up to an hour of runtime out of this battery. In the future, I see them probably coming out with higher amp hour batteries that provide uh, longer run times and stuff like that. But only the future will tell uh, when it comes to that. So I give this thing a thumbs up in my book. I mean, we put it through a to torture test. Um, it cut seven full cookies off of that branch that was the size of the blade. That's pretty impressive for a little battery tool like this running 10, uh, 10 volts, you know, 10.8 volts. Uh, I think the amp hour on it is 2.6. Okay, so 2.6 amp hour, all right? Really, um, you know, very, very underpowered. It looks like 2.1 amp hour. Uh, corrected usable energy will be less so 2.1 amp hour for this um, very very impressive tool so the last thing I have to say is uh, thumbs up on the uh, quality uh, and it is absolutely worth the 150 bucks uh, especially for what I'm going to be using it for um, pruning and, and doing vine control and stuff like that am I going to go through the woods like that and do bush honeysuckle probably not so uh, this works a hundred percent just as expected uh, it's a pretty stout little tool, and it will be a uh, vital, uh, you know, a vital tool in my arsenal. So I'm not biased at all. I think that, uh, you know, it could be a little better, but I mean, it's a pruner. So you know, for what it's designed for, it's pretty darn good. Uh, I'm sure somebody else will come out with another one. Milwaukee will probably come out with a pruner and just blow it out of the water. I don't know. We'll see. So maybe they're not even interested in getting into that market, but they have pole saws and they have chainsaws, so uh, I'll probably see some offering from them in the future. But I would definitely highly recommend this. Uh, you know, for the bang for the buck, I think it's there. 
uh, and it absolutely impressed me. So the last thing I have to do is to uh, show you how to tension the chain on it. If you're interested in that, stick around. Um, but as always, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. And for those of you not sticking around for the chain tensioner, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, chain tension on this is all manual. So you take this thing up and you're gonna screw this out. So it is the full cover here. So after every time you use this thing, I would go ahead and uh, clean it out. As you can see, the sprocket, remove the battery anytime you're working with the chain, so that way it cannot engage. Um, this little six tooth sprocket is not too shabby. Um, you can take this bar and chain off and you can clean out all of the little things in here. Um, you know, or all of the grooves in the in the chain here or in the bar here man I'm lost for words um, all of the all of the grooves in here uh, make sure they're cleaned out don't drop it and throw it on everything but uh, make sure your chain slides through the the guide bar as it's supposed to uh, you can dump out all of your stuff onto your brand new case but once you put it together and you have it in here, uh, the chain tension is all on you by hand. So you go ahead and slot it in here as well as you can. Uh, this turn thing is literally just a, a nut on the other side. So you set it in here in the saw and then tighten it down. Get it close to what you are wanting to uh, close to tight. And then you're just simply gonna pull out on the bar. So you'll be able to move it a little bit. You'll see the chain get tight and then literally just tighten this the rest of the way down. So it doesn't need to be super tight. It just needs to be able to roll along it like that, okay? Once again, keeping the battery removed as to not accidentally engage it. But um, after that, uh, you can clean it up, oil it up and put it back in the storage container. All right, guys, I hope that review helped out some of you. Um, and of course, chain tensioning at the end there. Hope you enjoy. So I'll see you guys in the next video.